five, four, three, two, one. Today is another magical day at Walt Disney World. Today, David and I are up super, super early for David's second run. Second time. Second run on Rise of the Resistance. Now, time is 7.42. We've been in the park for just about 15 minutes. We got here super, super early, much earlier than we thought we had to get here, just so we knew we could be in the park in time for that boarding group. That being said, it still does not guarantee a spot. We need to be ready, primed to go in that app to sign up for a spot to get on Rise of Resistance. We're in line for Starbucks now. We're gonna make it. We're gonna, we're gonna try our best anyway. Now you may recall, it's been more than once now. We've come to Hollywood Studios. It's been a little bit too late and we missed the boarding passes for Rise of Resistance. We're in the park before eight now. So we should be able to get it. We'll see. One of the longest lines I've ever seen for Starbucks and other things already in Hollywood Studios. So it's gonna be an interesting discovery today. Now David and I are going to try it using two different methods. I'm gonna be on Disney Wi-Fi. David's going to be on LTE. Now, I was here with Tim Tracker before, and he was on Wi-Fi, and I was on LTE, and he got in first. We're going to see which one wins. I'm trying Wi-Fi today. Something very interesting, I'm on the Wi-Fi, but then it sometimes just kicks me off. I think there's just so many people on the Wi-Fi right now. We're still going to, you know, try two different methods and try. So now I'm back on the Wi-Fi. Another thing I'm going to do here, time is now 7.56. I'm going to watch the clock and keep the app closed. David's going to keep it open and we're gonna see kind of if that helps as well. Three minutes to go now. I don't think anyone's gonna be you know, stopping to order coffee while we're doing this. I think everything's gonna kind of go to a standstill because literally everyone around us has their phone out for this very purpose. What I'm doing is I'm watching the little clock app on my iPhone to see exactly the second it clicks over to 8 a.m. I should also note you can open uh, the Time Is website to kind of follow this as well, just so you have the seconds counting down, but I'm using the little clock. Five, four, three, two, one. Opening app. Keep resetting that app. Keep resetting that app. Good morning, group 18. Morning, group. I got it. I got it. Morning, group 18. We are in. Yes, we made it. I have never gotten a boarding group that high before. Boarding group 18, that is what I'm talking about. It's so funny, we're hearing like momentary cheers of joy, like someone says, oh my gosh, I got it, or something like that. But there are some folks I know who are still like working on it right now, kind of still trying to load the app right there. You can see some guests got it, some guests are still trying, but it's fast. Today it's gonna be super, super fast. Now it clearly does not matter when you get into the park, as long as you're here before eight, and maybe a few minutes before eight. You wanna give the system a minute to make sure that it knows that you're in here. There are some around me who got in group 100, some who got in the 50s. We got group 18 because we were to the second, but it goes to show, as long as you're ready, you should be able to get one. To celebrate getting boarding group 18 for Rise of the Resistance, David and I have caramel macchiatos here from Starbucks. Thanks to Rosie. Rosie, thank you so, so much for your gift card. It means a tremendous amount. So David and I have learned two new tricks when getting a boarding pass for Rise of the Resistance. First, keep the app closed until exactly 8 a.m. or whenever the opening is when you're here. Second, use that Disney Wi-Fi or at least try to. Seems to make it a lot faster. Take a look behind me. The bushes are up here for the cast preview of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. I am so excited to try it in just a few weeks. You can see those bush barriers go all the way around here, right there. So all those cast members are gonna be able to enjoy it. And then all the guests are gonna be able to enjoy it. I really, really like the idea that Disney's giving this early access to those who make magic every single day for us. I mean, this is a great idea. I love it. Oh, look, a lower crowd day. Only 135 minutes for Slinky Dog Dash. This is lower than I've seen it before. I've seen it much, much longer than this. Sure enough, we had time to get coffee, walk around a little bit. We actually do have a Toy Story Midway Mania Fast Pass, but before we even have a chance to use it, they're on group 16, walking toward Rise of Resistance now, first thing in the morning. Time is 8.37 in the morning, 37 minutes after the opening, and boarding group 18 has been called, making our way there. Appreciate it. My favorite ride at Walt Disney World. David, is this your favorite ride at Walt Disney World? I forgot. Oh yeah. It oh. is, yeah, okay. What? Is that a question? I guess, yeah. Uh, but you know, I've spoken to a lot of friends who have said Flight of Passage is their favorite. Okay. And there's something to be said for that. I think there is. But, you know, David does, okay. There's nothing to be said for that. Yes, there is. <laughs> I think there is. I think it's a great ride. It is a want, great ride. Don't want to take away from it. You're right. But, You're right. yeah, this one's just unbelievable. Looking at the waterfalls and caverns now, and I do have my coffee still in hand. The reason I can do that is because there are trash cans in line. That's important to know. So if you have coffee or anything else, you can take it, but there are trash cans along the way. Now, one thing I haven't tried yet is scanning for different things in line for Rise of Resistance and analyzing them and creating 
those codes, and then uh, getting whatever's inside. This is a really tough one. BB-8, is everyone assembled? Here we go! Yeah, location, the lost secret base. Never gets old, huh? It doesn't. Never gets old. See the troopers looking at us over there? Oh, yeah. oh God. Every small detail, even from that security camera up there, they use in the movies, kind of like those six little cameras, right? Right there. Very, very cool. I kind of want to just go in there and take a picture. I think, think that'd be okay. Or you think an Imperial officer would throw me in a separate interrogation cell? Prison. It's not that fun. It's kind of fun. This prison's kind of fun. Leave the cell with the door open and drop your weapons. Oh my god. Oh no, my god. Oh my god. Of the secret base. Oh my god. And then I will destroy you. <laughs> David, what did you think? Your second time on Rise of Resistance. It was really, really great. Definitely enjoyed this one. Scenes I didn't remember, of course. So glad we had a chance to check it out again. I love this one. Is it still your favorite Walt Disney World? my favorite. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There's just so much immersion. There's so many different details to appreciate. The windows. I love the, um, the cannons. When you go by the cannons and they're moving and yes. all that, just the pieces to it, unbelievable. Flawless run too, so there was just like so much to see, no errors at all, loved it. Hiding from the stormtroopers, go, 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 Chewie, go, go. David, we had to get up really, really early for Rise of the Resistance, and I know that getting up early is not your favorite thing to do. Right. But considering the ride, considering everything that it is, and the fact that we've got on less than an hour okay. of park opening, was it worth getting up super early? I guess it was. Okay. If, you, if, if you've got to get up early, you know, once in a while, and you caught it early today, and you were right on in the morning. So, yeah. That's rare. David usually doesn't say that about things getting up super early. You like your sleep. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's saying something for Rise right there. All right, we're going to try soloing it this time, see who gets a better score. You, you going to beat me? I'm going to beat you. Oh, okay. We'll see. It's on. Now, at some point in the future, I do want to make a video about how to get the best high score possible on Toy Story Midway Mania. But as you can imagine, it's actually really difficult to do that because you're, you know, you're riding as you're going around. I'm thinking about like putting the camera here so that I can kind of show you those secrets, but I wouldn't be able to actually show you. I'd like tell you, so we can, we can try. First tip, make sure you wipe off those glasses so that everything's clear inside the game. Now, it's a lot easier to have two people playing this game, but for one person, you can still do pretty well. All right, so the first game is just practice. You're gonna just kinda launch things, don't wear out your arm yet. Just practicing, practicing, practicing. Okay, first one, we're at the farm here. What you're going for is the fox coming out of the hen house and the mouse going around the barn. Okay, 34,100. Not bad, but again, with someone else, much easier. Next one's the lava, and the key here is to hit all the lava coming out of the volcano. You're gonna hit the 500, then hit something else, then the two 500s, again, coming out of the volcano. Then you get the eruption, and the eruption is a lot of balloons coming out of there, different sports. Now the hard part is the two meteors. You're gonna hit meteor one and two, all the way down, first for 100, then 200, then 500. Next up, we have the tank one. Start, you gotta, what you gotta do is you gotta wait about seven seconds, and then you'll see 2,000 plates shoot up from the sides over here. You have to hit both of them. Very hard to do by yourself. 93,200, not bad for this third game. Now Buzz Lightyear, you gotta hit all of the little aliens on the ship. You have to be down at the same time. Very hard to do by yourself, but I managed it just because of practice. Now for Woody's Roundup, you gotta hit every single target once. You wanna try and switch your arms if possible because you get pretty tired pretty fast. Let's see how we did. Here we go. 316,300 and confetti right there. That's a really good score, 316,300 and I was by myself. Easier said than done. A lot of practice. Best is our in best today. I can't believe it. 316,300. Best today. Oh gosh. I think I caught it on camera, but that is amazing. 316,300. Best of the day. Feels so good. Now we just need best this month. You should come away with an exhausted arm. Great run on Toy Story Midway Mania. David, you are getting closer and closer to that score every single time. I think there was one time now you've been like. 
2,000 points away from yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, I wasn't as close this time. Okay, all right, but another time. Another time. See, every single time we go, it's better practice. It's true. More and more. Walking out of Toy Story Land now in the construction for that new barbecue Roundup restaurant. Roundup, Woody's Roundup Barbecue, I think is the name of it, is right there. You can actually see the building coming along really, really quickly here. Time is now 10.35 and they're already on boarding group 46, which to me is actually really good time. I feel like they really are working through those boarding groups a lot faster now. Some days we've seen it where it doesn't make it that far at all. So I feel like it's just kind of working out those kinks. Think about how they said on the app now, you only make it to boarding group 61 guaranteed. That's true. If you're saying in the first two hours of the day, they're already at 46, they might make it to 150 today. It's so true. Yeah. All right, now we're making our way towards Star Tours and Muppet Vision. Not sure which one we're gonna go on, just, just wondering. You like wandering days? I always enjoy just hanging out, finding out what's fun. All right. You know, I'm tempted by those funnel cakes, but David and I want to get some lunch now. And David brought up a very good point. David? We could try that Via Napoli you've talked about. Have you ever tried it before? I've never tried it. Yeah, so that I think is worth going to. So we're gonna go catch those gondolas, head over to Epcot and see how long the wait is. I looked for a reservation, there were none. So maybe we'll be able to walk up, maybe not, but at some point we'll definitely try Via Napoli. At the gondola now, and it's good to know that if you're running a Run Disney event, there's no Skyliner transportation for those Run Disney activities. Glad to know it. Now from Hollywood Studios to Epcot. As we're walking towards Italy now, I'm thinking to myself, if they don't have any spots, for the table service via Napoli, we might go to that counter service window. I don't think I've actually tried getting pizza from via Napoli's window there. So we'll see if it's open. Probably should be though, right? Another great option if we don't get to via Napoli, Sushi Donut for, for the end of Festival of the Arts. Here we are at via Napoli, kind of a long line there and the window is not open. We'll see how long it is. Sure enough, it's 10 to 20 minutes. They told us to wait here in the lobby, so it might be even sooner than that. We're going into via Napoli. A lot of different options on the menu here. Seeing a lot of great looking white pizzas considering that and maybe it would be best to get maybe one really large pizza that's what i'm thinking and then split it up i feel like that probably is the way to go so we gotta decide which pizza looks good to both of us but considering what i see here on the menu i don't think that's gonna be an issue sure enough decided to get the 20 inch for two or three people but she said it was good for two the white pizza which one was it sam sam Gerardo. Gennaro? Gennaro? Gerardo. Sure enough, to start it all off, we've got the garlic focaccia bread. It was recommended to us by our server, but we couldn't find it on the menu anywhere, so it still does look really good. We're both super hungry, so we're gonna dig in and give it a try. Cheers with bread. Super, super garlicky. Like you're gonna get a very strong garlic taste. You gotta love that but maybe a tiny bit more butter on this would be perfect. And that's about it. I really like it. And sure enough, our Italian sausage white pizza has arrived and it looks delicious with tomato and onion on there. David, are you excited? I am so excited for this one. It looks fantastic. Yes. How about you? Oh, you know it. Let's dig in. <laughs> While trying to serve the pizza, tomato down. It's like tomato water. All right. Drink it. Drink the tomato out of there. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. Do it. <laughs> there you go. Oh, interesting flavor. But good. Here it is, the San Gerrero, I believe it's called, from Via Napoli, the white pizza. Ah, oh, so excited, here we go. It's, it takes a minute to hit you. It takes a, an extra second of cheese to hit you. That is how you make white pizza, in my opinion. David, your first time, this is your first time first ever time. at Via Napoli. Your thoughts, I'm ready. Unlike any pizza <coughs> I've ever had, fantastic flavors, that spice in there, some jalapeno or something like that. Absolutely love that, if you like a nice spice in the pizza. Also, the white is well done, too. I was expecting more of a sauce, white to it, but it's also like a white cheese. Yeah. In a sense, really well done, really unique, a great pizza. Definitely a solid choice here. I think this is one of the best ones I've had here at Via Napoli. The San Gerrero, I believe is what's called. I'll put the description in, you can see in the description, but this is so, so good. Highly recommend it, wow. Now David, the hunt continues for the best in-park dining at Walt Disney World. And I think you and I agree, Yak and Yeti is the current champion. Mm -hmm. Okay, we agree on that. Yeah, number one. Then after that, sci-fi, and we can talk about all sorts of other ones. Mm -hmm. Is you know Skipper Canteen right up there. Sure. This one, Vienna Poli. Would you put this in the top ten? I would. Would you put it in the top five? It is in the top five. That is what I'm talking about. So you would come back here again. 100%. If okay. I'm looking for food in Epcot, this is the first place that comes to mind. Uh, now a huge question. You ready for this? That is a tricky one. 
fish and chips versus Viet. Oh, whoa, this is fast. Here. Whoa. I'm coming here. And, and I'm a seafood person. <laughs> I'm coming here for pizza. That's amazing. Which pizza you can get anywhere. Yep. Not this pizza. Not this pizza. Oh. Really, really good. And sure enough, we have leftovers as well. I feel like it's a really good amount of pizza. Delicious pizza. Looking forward to heating it up later. Wow, what a great meal. Now, this lunch at Via Napoli is thanks to Kathy. Kathy, thank you so much for your gift card. It means a tremendous amount. Super, super crowded day here at Epcot. Tons of people around, so we're going to try and make it to a spot with a little less crowded. Inside the Good Fortune store here in China. Take a look, Year of the Rat, and there are a lot of rat items right here in the front of the store. Look at these plushes right here. $9.95. Wow. Taking a look at the early Flower and Garden Festival. Take a look. Mr. Troll has returned. Oh. Now, given the unbelievably extreme crowds today, this is just guests trying to move around World Showcase. We're going to make our way out back to those gondolas, possibly head to Art of Animation and Pop Century. For me, it's actually kind of odd to see the number of people flowing into Epcot here right beyond security. Dave and I can see tons and tons of people coming in. I thought this was the slower season. See, we keep being, you know, reminded that there is no more slow season. Take a look. There's the line to get into Epcot. Look at that. There's so many people there. Take a look. This is the line to get to Epcot via the Skyliner popular day. Compared to the crowds in the parks, it is an extremely light day here at Pop Century. Gotta love it. We're thinking about possibly getting those milkshakes. We heard it's amazing to try and find the best milkshake on property. But still, you know, working on that diet, which is very difficult to maintain, so I, uh, it continues. One question that I ask myself all the time, do I miss staying here at Pop Century? I do. I really do. Surprised as I am to say it, you know, that, that trip part, the trip component is something that, yeah, you know, I do miss it. I really do, being able to travel to some place that you're not always there. I do. I, I'm saying it right now that I miss it, but not more than I enjoy being here all the time. So does that make sense? Where it's like, I enjoy being here more than I miss traveling here. Hopefully that makes sense. Now that's not something you see every day. The Pop Century pool, totally empty, being cleaned now. A little bit of refurbishment to make sure it is fantastic for all future guests. It's a perfect time to do it too because a little bit too cold for the pool. Now that is a very cool license plate surround right there. Very, very cool Walt Disney World right there where dreams come true. That is awesome. This entire collection here is super cool. Look at this. Cherry on top, sweet as pie. Minnie and Mickey cups right there. And over here for the kitchen, take a look at these. You have these little uh, measures here, this little cup measure, and then it actually pops out, I think. And you got the Mickey right there. That is so, so cool. This is half a cup right there. I, I might need that. $19.99 for this set. Oh my gosh, the Disney ink and paint collection. Never seen this one either. Take a look. Super nice serving tray right there with all those Mickeys in the colors there. I love this apron too. That's, you see that with the paint splash right there? That's great. Now this is something I really haven't seen that recently. You have Mickey that's kind of just all white right there and you actually fill him in with the different colors that you want to right there. It comes with a bag that you can also color in. That's awesome, $39.99. There's one that I'm pretty sure my sister Michelle would absolutely love. You got a paintbrush here. Take a look at that. And all those right there are different colors that this paintbrush can be. It's one of those pens where it's like multicolor, and it's so many. It's like purple, green, pink, orange, yellow, turquoise, black. Really cool. This one's $12.99. Now this is one I have never seen before. Disney Parks with the Mickey colors right there and two fans. See that? Turn them on. Wait a minute. This one was spinning. There it goes. Take a look at that. That's super cool. Going through Pop Century, enjoying some of what's around here, and I'm thinking about the milkshake. I'm kind of full for milkshake from that pizza, David. I could go either way. We can skip it if you like. Come back another time. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I want to find the best milkshake on property, but being good on diet, that sounds like an idea that I will just hold off on. Just, you know, li little by little. There's some time in between them. After doing a bit more exploring all around Pop Century and Art of Animation, Dave and I are going to head off. Thanks so much for sharing in the magic with us today. It was so much fun sharing it all with you. Until next time. Have a magical day. And see you real soon.